Hello and welcome to Mano Gas Racing and another look at some of the new stuff that's in the version 1.53 updates that came out the other day. Um, there has been another update since then, so I'll just quickly go through the change log for that. That's uh, version 1.5.3.4. Uh, general, the new camera switch behavior on cockpit configuration page pending a further assessment. Added minus FFB underscore no fade launch command switch to disable FFB effect smooth fade in out on the pause and session start. UI and HUD. Added motorsports presets for Formula High Tech Gen 1 and 2. Removed Spurious help text from scheduled full course yellow setting. Fixed redundant GOLFL boost setting in setup menu. Just wondering what that is. Gone. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll remember what that is <laughs> eventually. Uh, physics disabled Formula Classic qualifying tyres until better support exists for AI, ca AI cars to run them. Adjusted baseline tyre pressures for Formula High Tech Gen 2 cars, set up, reset, recommended. Improved launch control efficiency for Formula High Tech G1 M2 and all Gen 2 engines. Nissan GTR revised suspension geometry. AI redone AI lines for Interlagos 91 stroke 93, Alton Park Classic, Watkins Glen, all layouts, Spa 1993. Further adjusted uh, fuel load AI scalers for all classes, factoring fuel tank capacity along with car characteristics. Fine-tuned AI tyre degradation to more closely match that of player for all classes. Further increased function to discourage AI from deciding to run off track. AI calibration pass for GTE, Porsche Cup, wet, Cobra Classic, B and FL, Formula V12, Formula Ultimate Gen 1, Formula High Tech Gen 2, Kart Cross Super Kart, Adjust the corridors at Daytona RC bus stop chicane and Vela Park 2010 to discourage drivers from driving off track and bouncing off inside wall respectively. Tracks added a dedicated safety car pit box to Alton Park, Watkins Glen. Barcelona GP fixed a physical irregularity in the track surface near the Europe car corner exit. Vehicles added colour matching driver outfits and helmets for all drivers in Copa Classic B Stroke FL, Copa First Car, Copa Uno and Hot Cars. Further increased speed thresholds for Formula Classics and Formula High Techs to produce under tray sparks. Further improvements to their visuals and dynamics are still in the progress. Right, now, um, the car classes they added, which are actually DLC, were the Formula High Tech. It was slightly confusing when I kept talking about high techs and my brain kept going, high tech Grand Prix, they're a race team, um, racing Formula 3, Formula 2 and a few other things. So, my, yeah, how to confuse people, call it Formula High Tech and everybody goes, high tech Grand Prix. No, Formula High Tech is basically the 1992-93-ish. Yeah, so, cars in it, uh... For the Gen 1, there's four generics plus the McLaren uh, MP47A. MP47A uh, was their development year of the, the high-tech stuff. They were behind Williams in terms of um, active suspension and things like that. They had, this is the first car they had that had paddle shifters and a semi-automatic gearbox, semi-automatic in the... It's, it didn't change gears for itself, you still had to physically change gears, but it could uh, control the clutch and all the other bits and pieces that allowed you so you could just keep your foot flat on the floor and it would do all the rev matching and other bullshit. So basically all you had to do was pull a lever, which is just what we do in sim racing nowadays, which is wonderful. Um, I'm not sure how many of the other cars are similarly equipped uh i think they all say sequential but i don't think any of them are fully automatic at all uh in this general i haven't tried them all i think i drove that one and found it a little 
interesting at times. Um, if you change down too quickly, it was a little bit prone to uh, throwing the back end out. But I think that also might be true of this McLaren. If you're a bit cat-handed on your downshifts, I uh, was trying it out a little while ago around the uh, 1991 version of the circuit, uh, Silverstone, and went, I'll use the modern one. I don't like the bloody curves on the 91 version. Um, other things to think about, uh, traction control, uh, the, I think the gearbox was done in association with TAG, uh, they also did, um, the traction control didn't actually come in until the Hungarian round, and they actually tried during the Portuguese round, I think it was, they practiced using a active suspension system but they didn't use it for the rest of the year that was too unreliable so doesn't have active suspension that didn't come until 93 and we'll have a look at the 93 version of the car in a while but uh just have a look at the uh oh, didn't make you do that i meant to do that press the wrong button what i thought is i would just go around uh modern version of Silverstone, do three laps and uh, that way I'll get a, if I do it as a, a race with just me and it, I'll get the replay so I can actually put that out of the corner otherwise if I just do a practice session there's no replay which is a pain in the arse but you can't have everything in life I think they said, was this the first car or was it the 8 that was the first car that had barge boards it must have been the 8 as I see no barge boards This was also the last year until 2015, was it, when they came back with Honda? This was the last year they had Honda power for a while. So for the following season, they had to revert to a customer V8 Ford unit. This is the Honda V12, 770-odd horsepower or something ridiculous. So quite a beast of an engine. Lovely looking lines on these cars. I like this sort of generation of car they were nice and clean simple no, no, none of this three billion tons of uh, bullshit air on it so uh, yes we'll uh, have a go with this one I think actually if you look at the this one it's a very Williams-esque colour scheme it reminded me of Williams when I was uh, playing earlier and trying out the AI a bit but oh shit slept with the wrong car now I'll get my brain in gear don't worry right uh, hopefully why have I got a bloody test I meant to go for a single race uh, Muppet right three laps oh, I'd already preset all this I was wondering why I had to change the bloody thing so uh, no AI so just me white cloud I've set the date to 1992 not that makes a lot of difference as I'm not using real weather, so no idea what the what the weather would have been like, so let's try three laps around here. This thing doesn't have launch control there. The following year they had launch control as well, so the eight has launch control. I don't think I've got a button set up for launch control anyway, so won't make a lot of difference. But uh, we do have traction control, we do have I like the uh, way the tank goes from 8,000 to 15,000 RPM. Oops, I shot that a bit. The tires are nicely warmed up. There's that slight uh, over rotation on turning if you're not careful and change down a bit too eagerly. Probably didn't know the turn change, but whatever.
a little bit wide on the exit of Magnets and Beckets. The car's really, really nice. It's, like I said, apart from that slightly weird occasional over rotation if you're a bit too eager on the uh, down changes whilst turning in. I'm sure somebody who's uh, better at sell than me could probably dial it out. A very quick car and it feels really nice. There we go with that uh, over rotation again. Well, that's about the only point I get any weirdness in the handling is just on that. Uh, give them a little bit cat handed. Might just be my driving technique, it's not suiting it. But overall, it is certainly nicely planted. Too much curb there. Yeah, I think it's down to my uh, sort of braking, turning, gear down, gear down, changed, being a bit heavy, causing the uh, slight step out of the back end. down in the straight line instead of when I'm turning in a bit more. See if that helps. Like I said, it doesn't do automatic upshifts like the newer car does. Which we'll see in a few moments. A little bit of understeering. Turn it on the grass a bit there. Better line through. Pick a little bit of time up coming out. Still, well, it's one of these cars you have to sort of work your way into a bit. Bit of sausage in over the curb there. car and one that you might it's actually quite easy to get into but it's, uh, it's one of these you sort of might take a bit more time to get your brain around rather than just being able to drive it. It drives really well apart from like I said if you're a little bit too heavy handed on turning with down changes it can cause the back end to uh, step out of it but nothing much I have to say. I was just wondering who S car is it's a safety car isn't it? Uh, I will skip the cooldown lap and uh, let's go into the replay and remember to save it. In that way, I can put it in the corner. So that, that is a really nice car. Uh, I did try out, I think it was the Gen 1 V12, um, and it's very similar uh, in the way it feels. Slightly lighter FFB, the, the, the FFB is a little bit heavier on this. 
than the the, uh, the V12, but it's uh, pretty much not muchness. I'm assuming they've got much the same technologies in. I just banged the crap out of my microphone, but there we go. But yeah, that's really nice. The uh, difference between it and the <coughs> Gen 2, there's one less um, generic car. But you now notice it's got uh, ABS and TC. Similar, five, uh, still six speed gearbox. I think this uh, Gen 1 V12 was the only one. Well, Damn, it's the only one with a seven speed, the rest of them are all six speeds. Then why that one's got a uh, that's got H pattern. <laughs> the um I think all of these oh, bloody hell. All of these are sequential. So there's only an H pattern on the one car in the Gen 1. Uh I don't know why you want to use an H pattern. Right, um, differences between the MP48 and the 47. I think it's slightly heavier, the uh, older car, because it's got the, v, the V12 on the back, which probably weighed a bit more. Um, the other thing you'll notice is it's got DRS. Uh, so it has ABS, TC, a automatic uh, gearbox that does up changes so you can uh, I don't know if there's any way of turning it on and off in the in the game I don't think there is at the moment I didn't notice anything as I was going through through uh, what's available um, so six speed slightly less powerful V8 in the back but a bit lighter so it's um, I think it was about 100 horsepower down 776 versus 660 so yeah 110 horsepower but a bit lighter so should should be gaining a little bit on there being a uh, little bit lighter but losing a bit on probably top end and that was one of the things i had problems with during the year was they were just uh losing out to the straight line speed of the uh the v10s uh Renault. They did actually try uh, a modified version of the MP48, the MP48B, I believe it was called, was it? Or did they actually not even give it a designation? I can't remember now. They tried it with the um, <coughs> Lamborghini V12. Uh, was it the V12? Yeah, V12. Uh, which was obviously bigger, longer engine. So they had to modify the chassis, lengthen it a bit to... Uh, fit the engine in much more power at 770 brake so on a par with the honda from the previous year and that with the active suspension and all the other stuff they had actually made it a quicker car but they didn't go with a lamborghini because they thought it'd be too unreliable um and they ended up going with a uh, peugeot for 94 and that turned out to be <laughs> horribly unreliable engine strangely enough that's exactly what Sinner had actually told them that it would be unreliable and crap so uh, take some notice your drivers sometimes they do know what they're talking about but again uh, a, a, a nice classic simple design no extraneous bullshit in the way of wings so very clean simple looking design but extremely effective especially with all the active suspension and everything else so how will it go around here compared with the other one I don't know certainly sound different with the uh, the V8 as opposed to the uh, V12 and like I said it's 100, 110 horsepower less so you're expected to be nowhere near as quick but it does have the uh, DRS and I'm just trying to think have I got a button set up for DRS uh, hopefully it's that one and I think when I tried it uh, the other day I actually managed to hold DRS all the way around the lap we'll soon find out I haven't got a launch control button set so I'm not doing that it's doing it by itself 
It's still the up changes, but you have to do your own down changes. Of course, me being me, I forget that uh, it's doing it automatically, so I keep wanting to change up earlier. I've left the DRS on. I'll try and remember to turn it on and off on the second lap. Because I keep forgetting. Or I might even try and do it now. again leave it alone it does feel a little lighter than the uh, the V12 it is a bit confusing that it does the upshifts but not the downshifts so uh, sort of persuade myself not to, don't touch it, leave it alone. Certainly hear the uh, traction control working well. It doesn't seem to have as much issue with uh, over-rotation on entrance if you are a little bit heavy-handed with the gear changes or alternatively it might just be that um, I'm just getting better at driving a bloody car or right? Again, super quick car. <coughs> Really, really nicely planted. Whoops. Bit of a brain fart there. I uh, meant to press the DRS button and chase down a gear instead. Interesting a rotation up on the curb there. Eh? Just because I caught the grass. Slightly better lap at the end there. Middle lap was a bit slow. 
Look at if again, it's got ABS as well, so you can hammer the brakes on quite a lot harder. Again, really nice car. I think I actually prefer this over the uh, 7. Uh, it's uh, probably my cat hammer is uh, more easily handled by the newer car. Don't know. Um, but yes, it's again a really, really nice car. I haven't tried any of the other Gen 2 high tech cars yet. I must get around to doing it. I've uh, got slightly less time to play games at the moment than uh, I would like. But there you go. You can't have everything in life, so. Let me just remember to save the replay and then I can. Uh, They have been uh, working on the external sound sounds, and it does sound nice. So yes, uh, I have to say, uh, although I've only tried the really the two McLarens, um, I said the the MB47 and the V12 version of the uh, generic cars felt pretty pretty similar, uh, and the lap times were within sort of about a tenth after I did about four laps in each. So. Should be well matched. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the uh, the V8 version of the H pattern goes compared with the others. That might be um, an interesting thing to look at, but uh, that'll be for another day. Uh, like I said, this is just a quick look at the cars and uh, give a general impression. And the general impression is very good. Uh, like I said, I, I think the uh, the eight is. Slightly more forgiving, as long as you remember that it's got DRS, but you seem to be able to use it every damn where, so... Although, strangely, I uh, wanted to try a bit, uh, for a, about five minutes earlier on. I found I was actually slow with DRS on all the time, as opposed to switching it on and off. Or I might have just been getting... Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm losing the plot, I don't know. Um, I'd have to do a lot more laps to be able to work out, out properly, but uh, I did find that the lap I tried using the DRS all the time was actually slower than the one where I switched on and off. But, but then I kind of used my brain a bit more for that. I was trying to work out when to change down, when to press that button. Then my Occasionally my left hand and my right hand didn't know what the other one was doing, so I ended up changing down instead of going on DRS, which, is, which I did during that one as well. So not good, but there you go. That's what happens when you get old. But uh, in general, I would say they're a really good addition. Um, they are, like I said, DLC. So I can't remember how much they were. I'll look it up on um, um, in Steam. Uh, I don't think they were particularly expensive. Uh, same as the uh, the additional part of the track pattern was uh, meant to be a bit cheap. But uh, yeah, really nice skills. Uh, well worth a look. They are quick, so again, how good they'll be as a race car as opposed to just uh, the fun of driving, I don't know. But uh, I will have a bit more of a play. I did have a few laps against the AI. Uh, I made the mistake of going around the 1991 circuit instead of using the modern one and actually ended up curbing myself and killing the car. So, But I was in second at the time. Well, can't have everything in life. So, uh, for me, for now, that'll do. Um, have fun, enjoy your racing. I will see you soon. Goodbye.